Roadshow coverage in a DNO policy. What is it and who needs it? A lot of startup founders begin their business journey with an eye to the future of a potential public offering. An IPO is a big deal, which can lead to potentially significant financial rewards, but it has its downside risks as well. Properly transferring these risks to an insurance company begins early in the process of founding a new firm with the purchase of private company DNO or Directors and Officers Liability Insurance. DNO protects the directors, officers, and other company leaders, as well as the company entity, from lawsuits which can arise alleging a plethora of wrongful acts in running and managing the company. Since these types of lawsuits often name company leaders personally for their acts, DNO becomes what we call personal net worth insurance. Further along the company's development and growth, you will probably find it prudent to purchase higher limits of DNO protection and include something called side A protection. This layer of coverage is intended to provide fail safe protection solely for the company's leadership. I did a video on that subject and you can watch that here. When discussions begin to take place around going public, your advisors may indicate that you procure something called roadshow coverage. And you may be thinking, what is roadshow coverage? Well, roadshow coverage is an endorsement to an existing private company DNO policy to encompass and cover the risks of your pre-IPO roadshows. A roadshow is a series of meetings where company leaders will pitch their potential offering plan to investors in an effort to build enthusiasm, demand, and interest in the offering. Often, roadshows are arranged by the company's investment bankers and other advisors. As you can imagine, there are significant risks when company executives are promoting their company in advance of an offering. Anything said or presented during this promotional period is subject to scrutiny and potential lawsuits, should those statements turn out to be less than true or the projections turn sour. This is why adding the roadshow endorsement to your DNO policy is critically important. A footnote here is that most DNO policies exclude these activities and potential claims which may arise from them. That's why it must be endorsed to the policy. Now, what if you don't have DNO insurance in effect at this point? If private company DNO hasn't been purchased up to this point, then you should be working with a skilled broker who knows DNO coverage well so they can arrange as broad a policy form as possible, including the roadshow coverage. We are specialists in DNO and would welcome the opportunity to speak with you about this. Now, other considerations leading up to an offering? As mentioned previously, firms along this growth path that gets them to an IPO territory should be gradually increasing their levels and scope of coverage, including employment practice liability, fiduciary liability, cyber, and possibly even employed lawyers coverage if the company has inside counsel. Prior to going public, company decision makers should be working with their insurance broker to arrange splitting these policies off on their own if they're combined into one policy, as well as preparing for higher limits of protection as needed as a newly minted public company. Industry benchmarking reports can be helpful in determining the proper limits of protection, but isolating policies into separate silos will help preserve coverage for DNO separately from other policies in an effort to protect your board and the demands of your directors. Post-offering issues. Once the offering goes public, your private company DNO policy is canceled due to that policy's condition known as a change in control provision. Normally, when a DNO or other claims made policy is terminated, it's recommended that an extended reporting period, often called an ERP or tail coverage, is purchased to allow that policy to receive claims for acts that occurred prior to the policy termination, but haven't been reported to the policy yet. This begs the question, should you purchase a tail or ERP on the private company policy now terminated? The answer is, it depends. In most cases, the new public company policy underwriter will match the existing private company's prior act date, but the new public company policy will likely have a much higher retention or deductible so purchasing a tail on the private company policy will do three things. First, it will adjust potential claims to the private policy at a much lower retention. Second, it preserves the full entity coverage for the non-securities related claims. And third, the tail also preserves coverage for claims that may arise from the roadshow. Yes, this is complicated and it really can't be explained in a video. 
but I think it points to the need to work with a skilled broker who can negotiate and advise you through the process so that you maximize the protection at the lowest cost possible. And I think this is where our team shines for clients. We have access to the global DNO market to craft bespoke coverage for you as a privately held startup through the growth phase and ultimately going public. In addition to DNO and other management lines of coverage, we also work on general business insurance for our clients. Have questions or unresolved issues you don't know who to speak to about? Why not give me a call or drop me an email? My contact info is in the description box below and I welcome the opportunity to speak with you. Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit the like button. Thanks.